In today's episode of Immigrate, I'm going to talk to you about what to expect on the new 751 interview that is now mandatory under the Trump administration. I'm just getting back from a USCIS interview that I did with a client yesterday, and I've got fresh intel to share. If that sounds good to you, then please stick around. I can't wait to fill you in. Welcome to Immigrate, the channel where you can get reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. I strongly believe that DIY is not a route most people should go, but I'm also realistic enough to understand that for a variety of reasons, costs, time, family pressures, other things, a lot of people do DIY. So my goal here and the goal of our organization uh, as part of our educational mission is to give you information that can help you go through that process and at least identify pitfalls. That's because you shouldn't file every application you think you want to file. You certainly shouldn't file every application at the time you think you want to file it. And there are many things from doing self background checks to making sure that the correct information is in the correct form to making sure that you are actually getting help from family and friends to look over things that can help you just do a better job. Okay. Today, I'm going to just give you some practical advice on what to expect in a 751 interview going forward. Uh, for those of you uh, who are CR1 uh, status or CR6 status, meaning you are the spouse of a US citizen, you're CR1 if you uh, did your kind of adjustment abroad, you're CR6 if you did it in the United States, that's all the six or the one means. Um, this is the interview you have to do in order to get away and graduate rather from your temporary uh, legal permanent status to full-time permanent resident status. And it's typically two years is the earliest you can do it after you receive your CR1 or CR6 status, okay? Um, and the reason I'm doing this video is because things have changed. Uh, the 751 process used to be pretty straightforward up until just now, really. and what you would have to do is just show that essentially you are still married and that you are you did not have to go through a divorce, you didn't have to uh, live apart, you didn't have to do any of these number of things that could raise a red flag that your original marriage, which was vetted at your original green card marriage fraud interview, wasn't so uh, bona fide as, as people thought, okay? But now the 751 interview is going to be actually a second bona fide marriage interview. And I want to talk about that, okay? We've been reading uh, that extreme vetting or increased scrutiny of all things immigration, whether it's entries at the border or it's any sort of interview through, interview through a uh, process, right? Like the green card process are getting harder. And there's lots of information out there this is what I'm actually seeing in practice. Okay, so yesterday, which would have been something like October 10th, right? I was at USCIS with a couple that is a client of our firm. And I'm not going to tell you much about them, except that one of the people in the couple had overstayed uh, one of their, uh, their immigration status. And so, so that, that was an issue. And I want to make sure to be at the interview. Okay, the other couple was from the other person in the couple, the U.S. citizen, was from the, the Philippines, okay? And I myself am originally from the foreign Yugoslavia and Bosnia uh, is, is kind of where I was before this big war in Yugoslavia took me from here and brought me to the United States as a refugee, right? And so both of these things are important because we get to USCIS in Raleigh-Durham, which is generally still my favorite USCIS in the country because people are so nice, it is so organized, there are never really lines that are overwhelming and it's just a good experience. And so we get there early in the morning, you know, earlier than we need to be. So we beat the line rush, which at every USCIS is going to start right around 9 a.m. Okay, so always get there like 45 minutes early. And we go upstairs to the second floor. This USCIS has a waiting area on the second floor to await our interview. Now, the interview I always tell clients starts when you are waiting for your officer to come out and get you for the interview, whether this is naturalization, green card, error, as will soon be the 751. And I say, smile, relax, everything will be fine. We know everything that's in the application. 
these XYZ things are the ones we want to think about. And the officer comes out and immediately he mentions that my client is in the military and says, hey, I was in the military for 20 years. As a lawyer, that makes me feel very good because we're establishing rapport, which is important. A USCIS officer is looking for body language, right? As much as they're looking for anything in your application that might not jive with what you tell them orally, okay? And then we get into the officer's office and not only has he been on duty, right? Has he been deployed to the Philippines and so knows something about that culture. He's also been deployed to Bosnia knows quite a bit about me. He even had his nose broken uh, by a tomato when he was peacekeeping in, in Bosnia. And uh, the tomato had hit his kind of shielded face so hard. He had a face shield that actually hit his nose and uh, blood started coming out and he thought it was the tomato. And I remember him saying, you know, at that time we were wondering the people are hungry yet they're throwing food at us. Uh, they must really not like us being here uh, at the moment. The rapport was good from the first minute of the interview all the way through the last. One thing that came out though, we went through the I-130, right? And then we went through the I-485. He checks the questions against the responses of both the petitioner, the US citizen in this case, and the applicant for the 485, that would be the foreign national, right? Now green card holder, we won, yay. And uh, he says, uh, okay, great. I just want you to know that for your 751, it is my recommendation that you not only hold on to all of your documents from your I-130, you know, 485 petition for CR6 status, but that you also continue storing documents of your life over the next two years in a very intensive way. And that's because there are, and this is important, there are no more interview waivers basically being given at all by USCIS for 751 petitions. It's been common practice, unless there's something egregious in that 751 application, that USCIS skips an interview and just approves it. But now those are no longer being approved, which means that you have to come to an interview. And what the USCIS officer was saying is that, hey, not only do you have to come in for an interview, but this is going to be like a second bona fide marriage interview. In other words, we are going to want to see that your marriage over the last two years has continued to be bona fide. If you think about what that means, it's when you applied for your original CR1, CR6 status, you have to prove that up until that point, your marriage had been bona fide. And that's what you have to show the documents for. Now you have to do a similar thing. So create a bona fide application packet right? Or at least like preserve uh, enough information to make one for the two years until you would become a full permanent legal resident, right? An IR1, IR6 resident, okay? That is much different than before. So what should you be doing in order to nail your 75 interview under these circumstances? Well, number one, you should be looking to add one another uh, to anything that's kind of owned, right? So you should be building on your ownership, your record. So you should be building on your record of joint ownership. Okay, that, that, that's really kind of like a basic thing. So if to your original CR1, CR6 interview, you brought a joint bank account statement, you didn't have joint insurance, you wanna go ahead and start getting that joint insurance. If you buy a house, if you rent an apartment, you wanna make sure that both names are on the lease. If you buy a house, same thing, if you can, put both, uh, both names on either that title to the car or the, the leasing agreement, okay? So just think, I have to just show that we are together. We are one family. Second thing you should be doing is, if you haven't had your interview yet, you should be going back and trying to rem write down kind of everything that happened at the interview. What were the questions that were focused on? What was my experience like? So you have a contemporaneous record of what happened there in case the 751 interview this new type of interview uh, kind of looks to to go back and compares what you said you know in year zero to year two when you do the 751 if you're just getting out of an interview or you're about to go into one go ahead and just put a mental note that i need to take notes from what happened and just kind of date it and sign it so you have a contemporaneous record okay uh, the third thing that the officer said that I don't necessarily agree with because I don't want you to base 
what your major life decisions are going to be uh, on on your immigration status necessarily. They said, you know, if you have children, that's a pretty darn good indicator, right? That that you've been together. That's always been true for seven five ones, but it's just uh, it, it seems like it continues to be true. Okay, and. The main thing for me, though, is you want to document, document, document. So be really organized about everything that you're doing. As bills come in, whereas you might have otherwise thrown them away, go ahead and store those bills that have your names on them. Put them in a file. You know, get a giant box. Get a big box like this and just start putting them in month by month by month by month. These are the bills that came in with our names. These are the bills that came in with our names. These are the bills that came in with our names. Uh, continue to take photos. You're doing Instagram, Facebook, social media anyway. Continue doing those and do them in a way where you're kind of looking towards that 751 future. And then the final thing is take that 751 really seriously now. Don't wait until the last minute, but look to create a bona fide application packet. In an ideal world, you know, you've put forward a really thick bona fide packet that includes affidavits, that includes all sorts of supporting documents for your initial interview, and you kind of do the same thing for the second one. So you've kind of these two big fat packets. Now to do that well, of course, you want to make sure you know what was in your green card packet so you don't have contradictory information in the other one. And anyhow, that's that that's that that's the strategy. That's certainly what we'll be implementing here in our practice. If you have questions about this, if you want to hear more about this, write them in the comments. Uh, we'll try to answer them. We've been watching how this channel has been performing over the past six months. Uh, we put up a bunch of videos, you know, through like March of this past year, and we're just waiting to see if there was a response. The response has been overwhelming. We have 1,500 subscribers, which for us might as well be a million. Uh, thank you for watching, and I and I hope to make more videos like this, which are sort of single shot, where I get to talk. They'll be a little less edited. In the law field, you know, we have limited time because we're constantly going to court, we're constantly going to these USCIS interviews, and so I'm hoping by doing this format where I can do single shot, where maybe I trip over my words a little bit, I can put out more videos. If that sounds good to you, if you like this, please subscribe, tell other people about us. We're going to have lots of goodies. We've kind of revamped our website, so you can go there at https slash slash bullcity.lawyer. Uh, we have lots of good stuff on Facebook. Connect with me there. I'm happy to connect with you. And until next time, this is Immigrate, the channel where you get reliable information to make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. Subscribe us, share us, blah, 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 all that good stuff that YouTubers say. Thank you so much.